again, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Tom Goldsby and I'll be serving as your host for today's masterclass session with Ms. Mr. Peter Legau. Uh, I am the Haslam Chair of Logistics and Professor of Supply Chain Management at the Haslam College of Business at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. I also serve as the co-editor-in-chief of the Journal of Business Logistics. I'm joined today by Peter Legau. Peter is a senior business consultant on the voice, vision, and mobility team at Kerber Supply Chain. In this role, Peter is responsible for identifying and designing emerging technology solutions and integrations with an emphasis on improving the productivity, accuracy, and safety of the impacted labor force. Before serving in this capacity, Peter was an implementation consultant and at high jump, specializing in software development and project management for both voice and warehouse advantage implementations. So welcome, Peter. It's great to have you with us. Hey, thank you, Tom. Happy to be here. So we're gonna turn things over to Peter in just a few minutes, but please allow me to go over a few items first and set the stage for Peter. Uh, again, this is the kickoff session for our masterclass series dedicated to workforce uh, efficiencies and safety. Uh, some of you, again, might be joining us for the first time and wondering why we're here. What's the purpose of the masterclass? Well, it's to tackle today's challenges, which involve increasingly complex supply chains. We're intending to bring you the best practices and innovative thinking from academics like myself, as well as insiders and senior leaders like Peter. So what we're trying to accomplish with each one of these masterclass sessions is to provide guidance and insights in managing your supply chain as a competitive advantage, a strategic asset for the business, an opportunity to excel, to win over customers, and ultimately conquer supply chain complexity. Uh, as indicated, this is the first of five masterclass set sessions in this series. You see that we have a Tuesday, Thursday cadence. We convene at high noon US Eastern time on each occasion over the next two and a half weeks. Uh, we have completed three previous masterclass series, and those are available on demand, uh, addressing various topics of contemporary interest in supply chain management and advanced technologies. So with that understanding, let's quickly go over some housekeeping items. All of your phone lines are muted out there. However, we do want to welcome your engagement, and you can do so by submitting a question at any point during the session. Just go to your webinar menu and look for that questions tab. Any questions that we do not address during the session itself, we'll receive some follow-up afterwards. Uh, also, and I invite you to go to the GoToWebinar menu to find the handout tab, because there we have a timely report, always timely report from Kerber Supply Chain on voice beyond picking, which again is the subject of today's session. Now let's find out from you. Um, those of you that arrived early had a chance to answer our poll for today, which asked, which of the following processes are you using voice for? And you see the results there that many of you, a great many of you, 73% have yet to adopt voice, which speaks of tremendous opportunity. Of those that are using voice, it looks to be an even split between picking and replenishment. 18% of, of you out there indicated that you're using it for picking and replenishment and 9% for put away. So Peter, it looks like a, a lot of opportunity for folks out there participating in today's session to figure out how to implement voice within picking and perhaps well beyond the confines of picking. So just to uh, get into the uh, masterclass session on productivity, efficiency, safety. You know, productivity and safety are often pitted as, um, as being in competition with one another. Uh, you see the quote on the screen there that comes from um, a, uh, a scholar, a, a journalist, that indicates that there are three reasons why we often position safety and production as dichotomous. Uh, on a spectrum. And uh, Terry Mathis points out that it could be a lack of strategy, it could be conflicting organizational and safety strategies, or a disconnect between strategy and practice in the workplace. And those are all viable explanations for this productivity safety conundrum. However, um, it also occurs to me that possibly technology can offer solutions to this conundrum. And, and voice technology 
in particular. If we can go to the next slide, you see some examples of how voice can contribute generously to your productivity in your distribution operations. You see some references there to increases in productivity ranging from 10 to 35 percent, increases in accuracy up to 85 percent, and decreases in training time by 70 percent or more with a delivered ROI in an average of nine to 12 months. Those are incredibly impressive. They don't speak explicitly to the safety uh, premise, however, and that's where Taylor Kennedy from the Kerber Supply Chain Marketing Team in a recent blog post uh, explains how voice can contribute to not only the productivity of your distribution operation, but also to the safety. In a very clear uh, example, she points out how by freeing up the, the picker's hands to be able to focus on the work as opposed to the busy work, uh, the administrative activities that guide the work and, um, and, and often the paperwork goes right along with it, the work is not only more productive, but also safer. And so I think with that, we get a sense that voice can be instrumental from a productivity standpoint, but also from a safety standpoint. And Peter, I think you're prepared to expand our minds and, and the possible arenas for the application of voice today. So uh, with that, the floor is yours, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Um, really great insight there. I appreciate you kind of setting the stage for our topic today. Again, that's going beyond picking with voice technologies. So as per usual, for those that have uh, attended one of my sessions before, I do like to start off with some context before we dive deeper into our main topic. Um, you know, apologies to those that already know these next couple points, but I do think it's good form for us to just take a second, make sure we're all on the same playing field uh, as we go forward. So we start off with the slide you see right in front of us. What is voice? Uh, there are really two distinct kinds of voice recognition. There is conversational voice and transactional voice. Conversational voice is the one we're likely all familiar with by this point. It's that free form recognition that lets us ask Google Assistant to remind us to take the garbage out when we get home or allows us to ask Siri what that one actor's name from that one movie is. Uh, that'll encompass your smartphone searches, your home assistants like Alexa or Google Home, vehicle navigation via Google Maps and other similar apps, and, uh, and automated phone systems that more and more companies are utilizing in order to, for example, better direct you to the right support agent when you call in. Unfortunately, the use case for conversational voice is ultimately pretty narrow. Um, they're very low to medium volume tasks, not things that we're doing with any uh, kind of heightened repetition, if you will. Very simple workflows and of course, little to no background noise. So on the other hand though, we have transactional voice and transactional voice is where you get your speed. It's where you accommodate your complexity and it's what you use to cancel out heavy background noise like the humming of a conveyor system or beeps from a fork truck. So for our uses, we utilize transactional voice for DC workflows to complete time sensitive inspection steps like you would for truck maintenance or equipment inspection at the beginning of a shift. Uh, really any kind of process that absolutely demands efficiency. So again, this is how we accommodate those high volume operations, complex processes with any amount of background noise. It's absolutely created for enterprise business where timeliness and accuracy are critical. So moving on to the next slide, um, I'd actually like to spend a little bit of time going over why and how exactly voice results in the benefits that, uh, that we know voice brings to the table. Um, I think it's, it's really common for us to say there's this percentage increase to productivity and accuracy and safety and, and throw a lot of numbers out there, but I don't see a lot of people actually taking the time to show you how and why we're able to calculate that. So uh, just kind of a, the precursor, one of the things I'd like to say is, you know, just like RF provided massive upticks from paper, that's the role we see voice playing. It's kind of the next generation, the next evolution of technology to use for, for people. So first thing I'd like to do is rather than thinking about productivity, rather than thinking about speed in terms of seconds or the steps taken by the operator, let's use time to action as our unit of measure. 
how long does it take a human to get to a point of action? Because of course, that's what it's all about for us. So we can break this down. For each piece of information that any human is presented with, that's actually three steps before we get to that time to action. We have to focus on the information, we have to comprehend or process that information, and finally, we have to make a decision, a decision to either take action or to discard that information and keep going. For the record, in case anyone's curious, uh, the human brain actually processes both visual and audio information at about the same rate. Typically, that's about 200, 250, 300 milliseconds or so, uh, just in case anyone's curious. So using the example that we have on the screen here, that RF screen on the left, you know, we see the zone, the location, all the rest of those fields up top until we finally reach the quantity that we're supposed to pick where you see the equal sign and the caret on the side there. Assuming we know to key in the quantity, our time to action here to perform a pick is eight lines. Eight lines worth of focus and comprehension before we finally visually get to the point where we know what we need to take action on. And that, by the way, does not assume that we're going to spend any time reading the exception codes down at the bottom, which take up almost an equal amount of the screen. That would be another six to seven lines. Now, contrasting this with voice, the prompt at this point in a normal picking workflow would likely sound something like pick 100 UOM to position one. In that case, you only have to focus and comprehend really one piece of information before you know exactly what to take action on. Uh, so your time to action is one prompt or, or one, one go, if you will, one piece of information. It's not that that other information isn't useless, by the way. We, we write voice in such a way that all of that additional information is there, the zone, the location, the inbound LPN. Uh, all you need to do is ask for the item description or the location, and it'll immediately be spoken back to you. So the impact here is that voice allows companies to train employees on the workflow or the function rather than the form factor, the gun itself. We ask people to focus on the information that they do need rather than what they need to learn to glance over in order to perform the same process. The reduction of that discarded information actually really reduces fatigue on your brain and on your eyes. Um, I would point to an example, if you've ever lost your sentence while you're reading and you have to quickly kind of scan down the page to find where you left off, this is effectively what we're asking our operators to do every day on RF. We can learn to discard all that information, but it doesn't mean it's not taxing. So finally, what this means is that you're able to get not just increased productivity, but sustainably increased productivity out of your labor force by removing parts of the experience that block or slow down the desired output. So uh, enough context, let's, uh, let's move on to the next slide and talk about why we're here today, looking at where voice is used within a distribution center. As we've kind of pointed out, and, and as Tom said, uh, picking is far and away the most utilized workflow, even if our poll results uh, equaled out between picking and replenishment. Uh, but we're going to focus today on the other processes you see here. Increasingly, we're seeing really big improvements and ultimately bottom line savings for operations that are utilizing voice for put away, replenishment, cycle counting, put to store, uh, fleet maintenance or inspection outside the DC as well. Um, again, we kind of look to those poll results. I would have expected a lot less put away and a lot less replenishment, uh, but it's interesting to see that picking and replenishment equaled out. So let's, uh, let's begin with an example. If we move on to the next slide, we have just a really brief video of somebody performing a directed put away assignment using voice. Get loaded in here. So, really, nothing, nothing too crazy there. Uh, but what I'd like to point out is, you know, when I watch this video. I see a human focused on a task and executing that task very naturally. 
His movements are natural. He shows up to the location, head perfectly up, hands free, of course. He's told where to go. He gets there. He's told what to put away. And all he has to do is keep his head up, focused on the case that he's about to grab or the spot on the rack that he's about to put that case. Um, he's always pointed in the direction of his next action and he's really focused. So quick video, but I think it illustrates the point well. You know, that's, uh, that's really what it looks like for technology to adapt to the user rather than the other way around. So with that, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and take everything we've learned so far and apply it to three different processes. So I thought we would start with directed put away. And as a heads up, for each process that we're talking about here, we're gonna take a look at what that basic workflow looks like on RF on the left, a multimodal approach in the middle, that's your hybrid voice and scanning approach, uh, really makes a lot of sense for certain operations or sometimes certain systems of record as well. And then finally, a completely voice optimized workflow on the right. Uh, that's one that has been created for use with a voice system specifically. So again, starting with directed put away, uh, for simplicity's sake, let's assume we're putting away a full palette of a single item. So we're gonna skip all the additional item prompts and, and all the, uh, the complexity that comes with a, a mingled palette or commingled palette. So on RF, you're gonna scan your inbound LPN, whatever's in your receiving staging location. Once that's in the system, once we've been assigned that work, we're gonna read the screen for the location. We'll scan that location once we get there. We'll read the screen again for the quantity that it is we're supposed to put away. And then we go ahead and key in that quantity once we're done. And for the most part, that'll take you through an entire directed put away assignment uh, on RF. So the multimodal approach in this case, will keep those scans. So we'll keep the scan for the LPN, but in this case, voice is going to direct you to the location. You'll scan the location, voice will direct your quantity and you'll speak your quantity in that you are putting away. So we're able to eliminate just a little bit with a multimodal approach while still keeping the accuracy of the scan. And then lastly, the voice optimized pro uh, process on the right, where rather than scanning, you're gonna speak the last four of the LPN. Uh, still basically guarantees uniqueness, uh, no loss in accuracy. Voice is gonna direct you to your location. As we saw in the video, that allows you to keep your heads up, your hands free, allow you to stay focused. You'll speak the check digit at the location once you get there, and then you'll speak in the quantity that you're being asked to put away. So some of the highlights here, because voice is speaking out the locations to you for multimodal or voice optimized, you automate the instruction of that material movement. You know, in the spirit of focus and comprehend, oftentimes we actually break up the voice direction to a location into two prompts. We'll say, get to this aisle, just focus on that. Once you're there, and we don't require a check digit, just tell us when you're there, uh, get to this slot within the aisle. So that allows us to cut down on overall processing and to keep people focused. It's all about making sure that we can reduce that time to action at any point in time as much as possible. Another highlight is this has the same functional accuracy as RF. Uh, that multimodal approach keeps the location scan, keeps you, uh, you know, scanning the LPN. So you're not changing anything procedurally there. Whereas an optimized voice process is gonna use a unique check digit that guarantees the operators at the right slot. Another highlight, this allows you to promote proper lifting technique. You know, as we just saw in the video there, there's no wrangling of an RF device. Um, you, you get to stay focused. You know exactly where your next instruction is coming from. It's coming from your speaker. So you can stay 100% focused on the task at hand without feeling like you'll miss something. And of course, uh, your head's up, your eyes free while you're driving and while you're performing the task, just like we saw in the video. For some other factors or considerations, uh, a lot of times we can use a built-in scanner with a voice device, and that'll allow you to scan the LPN at the beginning of the voice optimized process in case a business requirement necessitates that functionality. Additionally, utilizing a ring scanner allows scanning, or sorry, uh, increases your scan speed. So you can actually fuse the best parts of the RF, the multimodal and the voice optimized approach, um, really getting that ultimately you know, top end optimized process for all technology that you could consider. 
And then lastly, there are really simple ways to collect additional attributes if needed in a process like this. Um, we can add additional prompts, extra scans, extra kind of uh, voice prompts, things like that. We do have lots of best practices to accommodate this. So, you know, please, uh, please reach out if you want to talk about this in more detail, especially someone like myself, uh, always happy to nerd out over the possibilities here. So moving on to our next workflow, we're going to take a look at replenishment. So again, looking at the flow itself uh, on RF, you're going to read your screen for your locations, both your source and your destination locations. Once you have that location, you get there, you're going to scan your locations as your verification. Oftentimes for replenishment, you might scan your UPC and you'll key in the quantity that you're actually replenishing. A multimodal modal approach will voice direct you to your locations. Again, in this case, we're keeping the scans where they exist. So we're going to keep the scan for the, each location, source and destination. We'll keep that UPC scan just to keep all else equal and similar. And you'll speak your quantity in so that you don't have to wrangle the RF again. You don't have to grab that device and, and add more touches to the process or add more, uh, rather, take away the hands-free aspect of it. The voice optimize approach, very simple. You're going to voice direct to each location. You're going to speak the check digit that exists at each location. And you're going to speak the quantity. And notice scanning the UPC is gone there. We'll get to that once we get to the, uh, the other factors and considerations on this slide. The major highlights of voice optimizing or voice enabling this process is uh, the first two bullet points are exactly the same as directed put away. You're automating the instruction of material movement and you have the same functional accuracy as RF because we haven't gotten rid of a scan. Uh, either we keep the scan or we utilize something like a check digit, which is just as unique and just as accurate. A big one here is we eliminate device handling during the process. You know, most of the RF replenishment processes that I've seen, you're interfacing with the device at least three to four times, each location for the item number, for the quantity. If we think back to our slide on how exactly voice is faster, you gain more than just the time spent looking at screens. Uh, you let your operators stay focused. You reduce the kind of visual and mental strain on them. And again, you allow them to sustain their increased productivity for longer periods of time. We're not just talking hours. We could be talking days, weeks, months, years, potentially. And then lastly, um, one of the highlights with replenishment and where it's really interesting to me that we had equal picking and replenishment numbers on the poll is it's really a similar value proposition as voice enabling picking, uh, which makes sense, right? I mean, they're both effectively demand-based inventory movement workflows. So I thought that one was really interesting from the, from the results today. For some other factors and some other considerations here, uh, I said we'd circle back around to that check digit. You can actually make a single check digit unique to both a location and an item. Uh, we've kind of talked around this one, but this is one of the best practices that we've implemented uh, doing voice at Kerber Supply Chain. Whichever system of record that we're working with, it's already going to know the item number. It's already going to know the SKU. So sometimes we can combine the two verification steps, location and UPC or item, by making the check digit the last three digits of the SKU. Again, it's, it's kind of situational, but that's one of the ways that we can optimize productivity while maintaining or sometimes even improving accuracy. If they get the check digit right, that means they verified the right SKU. They're looking at the right item. They're replanning the right thing. Another consideration here is that we can interleave replenishment with other processes. You know, uh, personally, in the last few weeks, I've been working with a customer of ours whose DC is made up of 95% pickable locations. Basically, all of their racking in the DC except the top shelf of every rack is pickable. And that top shelf is where they keep their overstock. So in their case, we looked at doing what we would call an opportunistic replenishment. While they're picking, if they, they pick something and that current pick drops the location below the acceptable threshold, we can interleave a replenishment task in there because the overstock location is most of the time often directly above the shelf that they're picking from. So again, just kind of situational, but depending on the DC layout, we can implement replenishment without really impacting picking. We can kind of combine it into the same process. And again, a ring scanner can speed up all of your scans. 
So the last process I thought we'd take a look at before we head over to the Q&A, and I'll try to be a little quicker on this one just uh, for time, cycle counting. On, on RF, it's a pretty simple process. You're gonna figure out the location you need to go to, read the screen, you'll scan that location, you'll figure out which item you're going to be counting, you'll scan that item, you'll perform your count, and you'll key in the counted quantity at the end. For a multimodal approach, as we've seen, voice is gonna take over the location prompting and direction. You'll scan the location, voice will prompt the item, you'll scan the item, and speak count as you go. We'll come back to that. Voice optimized, very similar. Voice directs to location, you speak the check digit at the location instead of, the, uh, instead of a scan. You'll prompt the item, you can speak the last three of the UPC, arguably we can combine those two situationally, and then you speak the count as you go. So the major highlight is that speak count as you go. Uh, we call that a count up feature. So once you verify everything you need to verify, the voice system will say zero counted, next count. So you know you count the first open pack that has seven out of 10 items in it. Um, you'll speak that in and the system will say seven counted, next count. Then you pull a full pack, it has all 10 items, you say 10. It'll say 17 counted, next count. So no more tallying on a piece of paper, no more trying to remember what your current count is. Voice will actually do the counting for you as you go. Um, we come back to this, but it's all about focusing on performing the task at hand. And for cycle counting, that's counting as accurately as, as possible. So once you're done, you can say no more and it'll run the rules to figure out what the next step is, either to recount or to move on to the next assignment. You do get some added focus and some organization there, and overall, that's gonna reduce the, the total amount of recounts that you need to do. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to recount when the count isn't exactly what the system was expecting, plus or minus a threshold. So when you have to recount until it's the same twice in a row, uh, there's a lot of room for process mistakes to eat up a very large chunk of time very quickly. And through those, we see a massive increase, a very drastic increase to not only accuracy, which is the number one concern with cycle counting, but productivity as well. Other factors there, cycle counting can be written by location or by item. If you want to go chase down a problem item, it'll send you to every location in the warehouse or in the DC that we know of that item existing, allow you to, uh, to solve your problem items or at least figure out why they're problematic. This can be easily interleaved with picking. We would call that opportunistic cycle counting. I think that's pretty common out there. And just like we talked about, when it comes to a check digit, uh, we can combine location and item verification with one check digit as we talked about with, uh, with replenishment. So with that, thank you for the time and attention, everybody. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Tom for Q&A. Excellent, thank you, Peter. That's fantastic.